All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, a student loan is a type of loan designed to help students pay for post-secondary education and the associated fees such as tuition, books, and supplies, and living expenses. Now, it may differ from other types of loan in um, the fact that the interest rate may be um, substantially lower than the repayment schedule um, and the repayment schedule may be deferred while the student is still in school. Now, with the student loan bill that was recently passed into law, today we're asking what um, the future is of um, the Nigerian educational system. What would it look like? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 right, so ladies, I just want to hear your quick thoughts, then I'll bring in Uti. What do you think, how do you think this um, student act now, the student bill or student loan act, how would it play out when it comes to our structures in, in terms of education? The only fear me I have, right? I think I had read it out on Monday, the criteria, uh, something around um, the minimum um, amount that should be in the family account should be about 500,000. Then also um, you have to bring two guarantors. And again, from the list of the guarantors, you have to have a civil servant that Justice. has level 12, somebody in the judiciary system, somebody in, you know, that's practiced law for over 10 years. Um, I'm wondering how do we meet up with those kinds of, you know, criteria. And today I just recently heard again about um, if you've had any issues around drugs or you've been indicted and all of that, you will not be eligible to access that loan. Um, so, I mean, so for me, I just feel like, I don't know, those conditions, how would it play out? Because really, um, the people that truly need to access loans, right, how would, um, how would they be able to afford that, especially the minimum um, family income? You know? So I'm not sure. When, when it's 500, I think they say 500,000 and below. Yeah. That's the eligibility. Oh, is it below or above? Yeah, below 500. Oh, below really? 500. For, you're earning? Oh, yeah. okay. That means I must have gotten it's it all wrong. below 500,000. That's, okay. that's, that's, that's per annum. That's so your income should be below 500,000 per annum? Per annum. Mm. Not above? No. Oh, okay. No, go ahead. Below. Oh, that means my so, bad. Yeah, so there's that. And then I understand where you're coming from saying you don't know how it will affect. Because these are people, first of all, 500,000 is even on the family level. Because if, if it's a student loan... I don't know how you have 500,000 in your account. So I think this is from the family point of view in terms of your parents earn less. No, than that's how, that, it's actually a family, it's a family, fa yeah. family so account. So it's less than, yes. you, you earn, your parents earn less than 500,000 and you require a loan. Fine, but you being able to, then again, they have put all these measures in place. So somehow I think the onus is on maybe your parents to help out to get like some of this you know, the guarantors and making sure that your eligibility is in place. Like you have everything that would um, <laughs> allow you to be able to get the student loan. And I know that they said, um, I think repayment is after two years. Mm, so that Two years after NYSC. After completion of school. Yeah. After okay. NYSC. So they're expecting that within By then the, you should have gotten a job. By then you should have gotten okay. a job. But also they have to consider the fact that the Nigerian the way the Nigerian the system is, the job market is not very easy. So how, what would happen, and I also know that they have also brought out, you know, what would happen, you know, consequences okay. of not being able to repay the loan, mm -hmm. you know, jail, this, that. So I'm wondering how, how is it going to go? It's really surprising because for me, growing up, I never knew anything about student loan. I schooled in Nigeria and I never knew anything about student loan. But I so, hear that our parents had student loan. Really? Well, yes. between their time and our time, it's kind of got it's scrapped. Was, yeah. So it's new for our generation. So there's a lot of getting used to and a lot of awareness that I needs know, to be I mean, I even think made. it is more of, I need to understand what it will look like. But let me come to you quickly because yeah. I need to bring in Uti. So I share the same sentiment, right? Um, I think the part that caught me was the part about the guarantors, right? And knowing that level of people who would need to sign as guarantors. And I'm like, okay, for a family who is supposed to earn um, 500,000 and below per annum, if you divide 500 by 12, I mean, earning that amount monthly is very small. So I'm just like, okay, how who would do you they, need to know? Who do you need to call? How would they get to that how level? How would you get to that level? Who would you call to sign um, as a guarantor for you? And I feel like a lot of people will be very skeptical to want to sign, knowing that, okay, you don't really have money 
like that so yeah okay so let me bring in Uti Ale with experience in various disciplines including customer experience customer service customer loyalty digital marketing strategy content development and training both in public and private sector um, across two continents Uti Elu has been exposed to um, exposed to and benefited from student loan system in the UK quality education varied business style strategies and approaches and uh, as you already know she is a proud member of WIS. <laughs> you know, sometimes when we see this kind of topic and we know that we have our own, we don't bother anybody. We say, because we have our experts inside the building with us. But thank you so much, Uti, for agreeing to be with us tonight because I really didn't want us to have this conversation from just head knowledge. I wanted it to be an experiential conversation so that perhaps our president, allowing us to breathe and listening, he can understand how the system works, right, and how it impacts somebody that has been used to it. Because I've heard very scary stories, Uti. It's people that are living abroad. Ex education is not cheap. Mm -hmm. Some people spend their lifetime. Some people spend 40 years, 20 years paying back student loan. It's not particularly a, a good point for some people. It's a very sore point for them. So, I mean, with what we understand Nigerian system to look like, if you want to ask, um, assess what's it called, what the future of education would look like with student loan structure in place. What do you see? Well, it's a great start to the reforms that we need in the tertiary education sector. We have a lot of challenges in that space. And what I was most happy to see was that this is going to have a ripple effect because there are a lot of things that, um, this opens a lot of doors. But when you open doors, what tends to happen? If it's windy, it blows away dust and it reveals a lot of things. So what I see for me with this is, first, excitement, because really what it offers is opportunity for a lot of people who may not have thought that it was possible for them to access tertiary education. Um, so first of all, it opens those doors. It gives access, right? Um, but it does now, this is almost like when you say the first step is the hardest, right? There are now so many other steps that have to be taken for you to get from point A to point B. So this is the beginning of the journey. But what does success look like? Which is the question we're asking today. How is it going to impact the education sector? So once you've given, you've taken away one of the key barriers which is, is funding, right? Now, I hear you know, the comments that I've heard, even you know, as you ladies were speaking, around the challenges with the application. The application is actually not that cumbersome. The truth is, if you were getting a job today in Nigeria, a graduate job, you would provide guarantors. You would have to. And there are stipulations around who you can provide as a guarantor. Maybe not as small a list as this, but again, you would have to provide guarantors. So even drivers, even not everybody, if you're a nanny, whatever, it, you provide it, guarantors. The of the guarantor. Well, so again, let's remember that these, you're aspiring to a better life. So one, Nigerians, we make a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Mm. So we will find people, right? Mm. For me, the, the guarantors are not the problem. Someone said this to me this morning, and the first thing I said to the person is, Let's remember, first and foremost, that university is not for everybody. Mm. One of the key things that stood out for me in, in the act when I read it, it's actually a very short act, I encourage everybody to go and read it. Um, when I read it was the fact that it wasn't just universities. So it, it comes all the way down to vocational colleges, which is great. So colleges of education, vocational schools, um, you know, so, so we, do we see this in federal and standard? state universities, mm -hmm. right? It, it covers the entire gamut. So the fact is, now, it doesn't matter what level you want to study at. You now have access to funding. Nobody's saying it's only doctor, lawyer. Mm -hmm. If you look historically at where um, funding programs like this have started, I'll use the American one as an example. Why did student loans, what was the genesis of student loans in America? It was the race for space. So when the Russians were beating America, 
in getting to space, the whole Sputnik and all of that, they asked, why are we not, why, why are we not competitive? And they said, well, your education system, you don't have enough people. So they started off with um, technology sort of based sciences, math, and all of that. Um, those were the first people who ha had access to loans in America. And then they then broadened it, they changed the act, and then it became sort of a higher education fund. And they've gone through various um, circles, various uh, rewrites of their acts, their policies. They've gone through, in fact, I think America has tested it the most, hmm. both from federal loans to private loans to a mix. They've done everything. And I mean, we all know the horror stories in America of the kind of interest rates that are charged. Of course, there they have universities that are for profit and not for profit. So by mistake, you, 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 know, you end up in a for profit school where you are in trouble because you are now ending up with lots of debt. So it essentially is a good entry point, right? It's, it's the beginning of the journey that we're on. And I'm sure as we go through the conversation, we'll talk about what that journey is going to unfold and the areas it needs to impact. Because one of the key things for me that I said with this was, mm -hmm. you are going to bring in, mm -hmm. or rather, let's take for example that this program is hugely successful, mm -hmm. as we hope it will be, and you pour out a million graduates. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have a million jobs. That's how loans start to default. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so interesting. So when you talked about um, expanding it to colleges of education and all of those things, right? do you see this like improving the quality of the education that we begin to get from some of these schools, right? Since I am paying, mm -hmm. you know, I, okay, they say there's availability of loans and all of that. Since I'm paying for it, why can't I get a standard quality education, right? If you see this improving, impacting on the, not just the fact that, okay, people will now go to school, mm -hmm. but the quality of what comes out in terms of the, the graduates, what we're churning out, do you see this improving it in any way? Yeah. So. Again, there are other reforms that we expect to see. First of all, let's be clear. When we go abroad, Nigerians are happy to pay more for education. But in Nigeria, we like to pay peanuts, right? Um, and we expect it to be subsidized by the government. We, we've largely had that culture for a long time. Good things cost money, right? Equipment, education, good lecturers, good professors who are world-renowned. These things all cost money. When you look at CVs of MD, CEO, you see Harvard, you see INSERD, you see uh, ISA, you see all these schools, Oxford. right? <laughs> all these schools, they're not cheap. Mm. If you just do one week, two week, three week program, you are spending a few million naira just for the tuition. Not for a full degree, just a few weeks. You know, they just tell you, this person has attended, bam, 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 bam. They're spending a lot of money. So the reality is, what we are paying today needs to increase. The universities will need to, so now that you are being given a loan, I expect, one of the things I expect and the reforms I expect to see in that sector would change the way universities are charging and the way they're being run. Because they have to improve. Because now, today, what do we say about graduates? They're not employable, right? Now, if I'm going to take a loan that I have to pay back, then you must make sure that I'm employable. So it also means that the government now needs to hold the education sector accountable. Now, in the act as well, it talks about providing reports about the performance of the students, and that is part of the accountability. Because if you're not educating this guy well enough, if he's not passing, you cannot I can already see the default ahead mm -hmm. that this person is not going to be able to pay my loan. Mm. If you have students dropping out, one thing the act doesn't account for is dropouts. Hmm. It talks about two years after NYC. But if you don't graduate, you can't go to NYC. So what happens if you don't make it past year two and you drop out? There should so, be a clause for that. So the fact, I mean, it's an act. Hmm. Policies and, and things. Once the, the, the committee is set up, which is supposed to then run the fund, I'm sure all of those things can be worked out. Those are finer details. The act doesn't need to be that detailed. But the fact is, you need to make sure that everything, that's, that's the basics with loans. Because the money you're repaying as, a, as, a, as a, someone who has taken this loan goes back into the fund, which means more people can access the fund. There was, a, there was a nice line in the act that says, from I think application to disbursement is 30 days, uh, subject to availability of funds. 
So the fund must be funded. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to make sure for this to be successful, there must be reforms in the education sector. The quality of information um, of education must improve. The quality of the graduates must be improved. That then leads to higher employability. But then that also means that other parts of the economy must improve because there must now be jobs for them to go into. When we're even looking at the, the schools and the things that, so the, remember I talked about the colleges of education and vocational studies. Mm -hmm. You now need to look at, you're creating a better standard of teachers, people who are now going to, you know, it, it, I, what I love about it is a ripple effect. The minute we get better teachers who are going into our primary We're schools, our children. nursery schools, you start to get a better quality of people going Education. into the tertiary yeah. um, situ um, uh, level. Yeah. Because right now, we're missing for a lot of people the skills that children learn as children. When we talk today about Gen Z and we laugh, a lot of the challenges we have there is an absence of critical reasoning. These are things children pick up as children. The ability to unwind your imagination because you've been taught the art of storytelling, of creative thinking, all of those things are missing right now. So you can because see the that... the quality of the teachers that is, are coming yes. out of colleges of education do not Thank have you. that capacity. So when you look at all the other curriculum, these curriculums are developing as they go on. Mm. The Nigerian curriculum is still one plus... Do you get what I mean? So... You, when you're talking about how it's going to impact the system, you can start to see that beyond even just money and the graduates, you can see the ripple effect. Mm. Then you talk about on the vocational side. Today when we all talk about artisans, we pull out our hair. But the truth is, imagine if we had well-run vocational In fact, eh, schools. I want us to come back to that because there's something you, talked, you touched on when you were talking about America that I want us to revisit. But let's go on a very short break. When we come back from that break, we'll continue the conversation. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, uh, we're discussing the future of Nigeria. Um, of course, Nigerian education, and we have our very own Utielu with us. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 So I want to come to the ladies. Do, do we have, because there's something I just want to quickly follow up on what Uti said, linking it up to the vocational school. You remember you said that America saw that there was a gap. They wanted to go to space and all of that. Mm -hmm. And they said, why are we not going to space? What, what, what's mm -hmm. happening? Nigeria currently, we have gaps. And I believe that um, the schools that we truly need to really empower are the technical schools and the vocational schools because those gaps, right, if we are able to quickly, um, you know, bridge that gap, yeah. some of the challenges that we have right now are not meant for university graduates. They are meant for people that are coming out of technical schools and all of that, yeah. right? So do you think that, I mean, like speaking to, to, to the people that are in charge of this, would it be a fair idea to say, okay, you know what, let's narrow this funding? Now, because I remember there was something that Professor Yemi Oshibajo had talked about mm -hmm. when he was trying to fund, was it fund now or something? They were supposed to do something around the educational, mm -hmm. and they were focused on specifics, right? Yeah. I can't remember it now, top of my head. So do you think that it would be nice now for us, to, as a way of incent incentivizing mm -hmm. some of the gaps that we already have, mm -hmm. then channel this funding, first of all, at this first phase, mm -hmm to things that we believe that, okay, for instance, we have issues with infrastructure. We have issues with rather probably road networking and all that. So all those kind of course, courses that you would study that will bring immediate yeah, uh, solutions and immediate change to our current challenges, would that be a wise thing for the government to consider? Well, so if we take what has happened, you know, remember I said that university is not supposed to be for everybody. Um, generally, the government creates policies and creates, you know, bills and things like this to stimulate the nation, the economy, things that keep the wheels turning, increasing the, 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 GDP, the GDP, all yeah. of those things. So sometimes we want the government to be, what's the word, altruistic, charitable. We think that they're just doing it for the good of the people. What they're doing it for is the good of the nation, right? Um, and the people are a part of that. So typically, I'll use the UK as an, as an example. At one point, everybody was going to university. Nobody was going to vocational colleges. So there was a shortage of plumbers. Mm -hmm. There was a shortage of electricians. There was a shortage of work, like literally artisans, what we call artisans. So what they did was they had to make the vocational sector 
more attractive. attractive by incentivizing. And in fact, you could sort of see at that point in time that the call-out fee for a plumber was huge. So people are now looking like, plumber. I want to become a plumber, right? <laughs> so the fact is, I mean, when I worked for the Australian government, we used to get tons of young people from Ireland, all in vocational space, hmm. going to Australia. Why? Because they had shortages. They are building houses, shortages of plumbers, shortages of electricians. These people standing on the road with, with billboards going, have jobs, will hire. Right. So imagine, given the capital, human capital that we have in this country, mm -hmm. if we were training our artisans to that level that they could go abroad, because there are certifications they have to have to be able to be eligible for these kind of programs, then FX is flowing into the country. We're expanding the diaspora. So it, it has that kind of ripple effect where, yes, do we need to focus on those people? Yes. Do we need to streamline it? No, I don't believe so. Because right now, we have a huge funding problem. So everybody will benefit from this, right? But we do need to look at those places. For me, why I say it's more important is because we have a larger informal sector mm. than formal sector. Mm. So our graduates and the job they're going into is a smaller number. Now, if you were pumping out more teachers, more carpenters, more, these are people who will most likely be entrepreneurs. Yeah. And we'll be paying back their 10% because we're building houses. They're constantly working. They're getting Mechanics, they're getting cars, jobs. they're getting jobs. They have more opportunity to hit the ground running quickly than the graduates who are trying to get maybe into financial services or telco Oil with a more gas. limited spec, mm -hmm. you know? White so color. that for me is where I say this. I mean, every other street has a school. Mm -hmm. We need teachers. We need quality teachers so that we can start that chain off the right way. So I think, yes, we need to look at it, but we're just starting. Let's even kick off. Let's see how this is going to galvanize the entire education sector. Mm. But we need to start. Mm. OK, ladies. <laughs> so for me, um, I love Uti. She has said a lot on this. But for me, I come from. Is, I have more questions than yeah. You know. that's, the, that's why she's yeah, here. Yeah, I know. I have more <laughs> questions. So for me, I, I you know I saw it in the in the news that how they plan on actually where these funds will come from, mm -hmm. and you know they mentioned um, Nigeria one one percent from certain um, um, agencies, which would include uh, customs, Nigerian immigration, FIRS. And I also understand that in the bid, probably that's the reason why the FIRS has been, you know, on a lot of businesses and just trying to get their money out because one percent of that is supposed to go, which should amount a combination, should be to amount to a start of a, of about two hundred billion. Mm -hmm. But would that work? Is that sustainable? It is sustainable. I mean, first and foremost, we all need to get into the habit of paying taxes. So, yes, I, pay my taxes. so, so um, I mean, we need to, to also collect taxes in a manner where it also doesn't hamper the SME sector, the smaller micro you know, enterprises, because sometimes it's a bit, the tactics there are, are a bit, you know, yes, draconian. But we need to get into the habit of paying taxes. So we're expecting 1% from taxes, tax levies and, and that. We're expecting 1% from the proceeds of petroleum products. Um, but the part I actually want to touch on um, and this is where I think that people also need to get into the habit of giving back. So hmm. there's endowments, there is contributions. So again, imagine if you've benefited. So today, a lot of people had cheap education. All the people that are jackpot that went all to UI, schools. that went to Osaka, that uh, went to all these places. <laughs> cheap education. It's hmm. time to pay it back. Hmm. It's time to, to give actually back. give back. Right? Well, how do they put that structure in place? Because most of Again. the Ivy League schools, mm -hmm. right, they are... Alumni they, yeah. It's an Alumni. alumni structure yeah. that actually, all this one that you say you have full scholarship to this, to that, it is somebody that is funding Painful. it. They are paying back. So how do they put that structure? So again, remember I said that this is early days, right? And everybody so far has talked about the 1%, 1%. Because again, we still have that mindset that is from the government. Mm. It's from central money. Mm. But you can actually do something. We, we all have to collectively come together to fix our problems. Yeah. It can't always be from the center, right? So yes, a lot, 
I mean, that committee, when it's set up, I mean, I like the spread of people that are in the committee. So um, Minister of um, Finance, Minister of Education, even representations from ASU, Vice Chancellors. So we have a lot of stakeholders mm. who, will, you know, we have conversations like this in terms of how it's actually going to look on a day to day. Mm. But I like that you talked about scholarships because there are many ways in which to fund education, yeah. right? Today, when people go abroad, you see people saying, oh, I have a scholarship for um, a PhD in this. Because why? Somebody's given that scholarship to drive research in that field. Mm -hmm. So if you remember in the past when we've talked about ASU strikes and we've talked about how universities should start to raise money and become a lot, you know, more, creative. A lot more creative. So again, these are the places we're looking for. And these are some of the reforms that, we, that have to come for this to be successful. Mm -hmm. Because our universities have to change. It can't be in this current dispensation, putting out the type of graduates we are putting out now, mm. that we expect that we will then change the system. If not, this, this law will not succeed. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, the thing is, given that you are, so imagine your 1% has gone into the fund, mm -hmm. right? And we, we need to monitor this, we need to see the numbers. So in the UK, they went from a bursary structure, um, I missed that bursary, God, it was like by one year. So I was going to go into university in September. They ended the bursary with people that went into university the year before me. <laughs> so I was like, Kai. So I was the first set to take on the new student loan, student loan structure. And it was, it was they, they increased school fees also at the same time. Um, these loans help people to come into university, mm. help the universities to get tuition. Mm. It keeps the system running. Yeah. It's like, you know, a, 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 a lead generation type of, of thing yeah. there. So we got the loans. Now, these loans, by the way, that this um, act speaks to is only tuition support. Mm. So it doesn't have any maintenance fees. The, the UK program looks at tuition, and which it pays straight to the university. Mm. And then you can also you apply, apply for, for, like, uh, um, for living help, support, living support yeah, yes. and, and all of that. And it pays that as well. Um, and that one is paid to you, I think, if I remember correctly, it was on an annual basis. School was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, on an annual basis. But essentially, right, you came out of university. So here we've defined our moratorium as two years post NYC. So technically it's about three years because if you graduate, it takes you like maybe six one months year. to start NYC, one, yeah. one year to do NYC. So maybe let's say second, at least minimum three years, but more like three and a half or so. So you have this moratorium, right? Um, they haven't set, and this is what I think is missing, a minimum standard of what you should be earning. So what they just said is 10%, 10%. right? Whether you are a salary earner or you're a business entrepreneur, 10%. Now, let's look at entry salaries, hmm. right? I mean, the entry salary is barely enough to live up. Yeah. Now you want to then take 10%. 10% doesn't sound like a lot, but when you earn 80K, or 100k, or even 150k, somebody removing 10%, you're going to feel it, because the money itself is already not enough. Mm. So perhaps what was done in the UK was they set a threshold, right? So you, you graduate, you start earning this amount. When you start earning this amount, then they only take a percentage of what you earn above that amount. So it makes it a little bit easier for you. Mm. So you kind of have worked and you're earning quite a bit before you start to feel it. Because if you're earning only maybe a thousand pounds over whatever it is, you're, the, the, then they're only taking, I think, about 9% of that. So it's, it's not choking, mm. right? Because remember that this is targeted at low-income families. Yeah. They are also the most marginalized. Yeah. So when you tell somebody that can afford it to take a loan, you know, people use loans to make money. They of use loans to no. do business. Yeah. They don't have a problem with it because, they it's, can pay you know, that. But when you tell a small person to take a micro loan, mm. it's like you're almost, you know, so these are the most marginalized of people. So you, you kind of almost have to sell it to them to say, this thing is going to be better for your future. Mm. So some of these thought processes around that, because it will help to sell it. Mm. It will help to get it to the people who need it. Because for me to, like you said, go and find the guarantors, the justice of the peace, the lawyers and all of that. 
I need to believe that I'm going to come out on the other end of it better. Trust yeah. me, if yeah. I go and find all those people, by the time I beg them, 50-50 k every mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. My sal my school fees yeah. is complete. Yeah. You know, so, uh, Jennifer. I mean, that brings me that brings me to my question, right? Um, we've talked about the positives, which is really amazing, and I love the fact that this is giving a platform and an opportunity for people who cannot typically pay for school fees mm. to be able to go to school. But um, I know that there are always risks to things like that. There are always challenges. So um, what are, what are the foreseeable um, challenges that the government might face with this loan in place and how can they mitigate it? So foreseeable challenges, again, um, I like to use the American system. When something starts to pinch you, you start to shout. Um, when something like this is not properly run, which can sometimes be a risk, we know we're in Nigeria, yeah. right? Um, the voices can get loud because... 1% might not seem a lot, but when you are working and sleeping and your 1% is going into a pot that is then being mismanaged, we start to complain, yeah. right? When we see that the people who should benefit from this are not benefiting from it, we start to complain. One of the most likely things today in Nigeria, we know that we have a corruption problem. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to be trying to get a loan if this process is not fully automated, mm. you have to sign, you have to sign, you have to sign, yeah, and I have to talking. bribe my way through. You don't yeah. cancel. You've killed it, yeah. right? So the things that we know that are particular and unique to us as Nigerians and our culture, it needs to be addressed. Mm. So it says now that the application comes through the person's bank. Again, I have a problem with that because even banks, there's enough problems there already. This is a system that can be fully automated because one... You, my, my process of getting uh, an account, no, um, getting my admission, all of those things, JAM has been sort of resolved, digitized, yeah. all of those things have been digitized. So it is a process that can be automated, that can be done, even in collecting these various details, mm -hmm. right? It can be automated. It doesn't need to go through. The thought of going through the banks is like, okay, because I'm going to pay money. But you're not paying money to me. You're paying money to the to the institution directly. Mm. So CBN to the fund, fund through the deposit money banks to the schools. I don't actually think you need the deposit money banks in that process at all. Um, the fund in itself could have its own funds warehouse somewhere and the fund could move money directly to yeah. the institution. You just need to get financial experts yes. that, under so, that understand the system to run the organization. To automate that process mm -hmm. so that I can go in and I can do it fully digitally. So that takes away the need all to those, see all anybody, beg anybody, bottlenecks. Yes. Because they've said 14 days, 30 days in terms of feedback mm -hmm. and, and disbursement and all of that. For you to achieve that, it, technology must be involved. Yeah. For you to curb any shell practices, technology must be involved. So I'm hoping that when this committee is set up, because the act gives them space to you know, make whatever partnership, do whatever they need to do to run it. So I'm hoping that they will leverage technology to deal with some of these risks. Again, the reason why I say so, this is where ghost students will start to turn up. <laughs> and the minute we start to have ghost students, that means that we're increasing default loans yeah. in the future, yeah. Yeah. and we're making the pot smaller, yeah. which means that in the long run, because I understand that there was a, um, a student loan board that, again, due to defaults and, and issues like this, it was scrapped sometime in 1984. So the reason why we did not benefit from it was because of these problems. So again, risk-wise, mm -hmm. if those learnings are not taken, if the sharp practices are not dealt with, we will end up with monies, because the money goes to the university. Mm -hmm. If the university has autonomy to spend the money, let the money come to me, and we will all share the money. Mm -hmm. It's possible. So yeah. there are those leakages and gaps that we need to plug. The quality of the education, like we said, is a huge risk. So we've talked many times about how we manage performance. If the corporate sector can manage performance well, the government needs to learn to manage performance because we now need to hold the lecturers accountable. If your students are failing, what is mm. the problem? Mm. Yeah. Sure. I really love that. Mm. I love that because, again, now I'm just thinking in my head how it would work, right? There's already a, an automated system for even from their point of WIAC all the way to the jam. point of their jam and all of that. You already see it. So admissions will then be tied. Do you get, so these things is even a function of you even 
as the this is sending as you are sending the admission letter and all of that you can also send that this is mm -hmm. the uh, uh, an opportunity for you to also access in case you would you be needing you know, so, oh, they, know, they know they wait for you they go ask you would you be needing some mm -hmm. some uh, loans to be you know if you do, do pre click this click that i think that automates automate automation of the system mm -hmm. would change the face of education again this now means that a lot of these schools must be fully you know automated in terms of their digital processes of results and all of those things so all those ones where they say pasting and all of it, everything their mails coming in and all of that yeah. but i mean in, in in trying to wrap up this conversation and tie it nicely right we all say that i think recently i mean i just heard a breaking news that the escc boss have been suspended you know so <laughs> there's there's a lot that is going on all at the mm. same time yeah. in nigeria right and it seems to me like um because again, we've, we've, we, I think we've said this thing several times that the, the, the key in, um, sectors that have really suffered the most, right? And if they were running well, some of the problems that we are facing will not have it. Yeah. Education is one of them. Healthcare yeah. is another one. And um, of course, Transport. transportation, Transport. infrastructure, you know, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, you know. If, so, and the direction, power, power sector. If you see the direction of where the president is going, He's touched on power. He's touched on education. He's touching on uh, on on the finance, the yeah. economy, right? That's with the big. CBN um, now, with the money policy about you know the dollar market, market forces mm. determining and all of that. There's a lot happening, yeah. right? But how do we get these loans to really, really be the the interest to be a bit bearable? Some economies. <laughs> We want to breathe. <laughs> Some economies, Uti, 2% are on their loans. Mm -hmm. Especially for like people that want to do businesses, like if you want to start up a business, 2%. Yeah. You know, since we know that this sector is really critical to the transformation that we seek in the country, how do we get how do we bring that that interest rate? Well, I mean, first of all, for the education sector we're talking about, these loans are interest free, so that is great. Um, another reason, again, why we must keep the defaults low, because there is no additional money. The money that went out is what is coming back. And that money is not only servicing the loans, it's going to service the employees of the funds, whatever is being spent, all of that is coming out of that bucket. So really tightening and making sure that that money, one naira, one cobo, in fact, doesn't go missing is very, very important. Mm. Um, the concept of interest for loans, there are many factors that go into what the interest rate is. Monetary policy, yeah, but this one we've seen that should have one percent of all of us who they work, they want tax. Yeah, but this one is not going to be interest it's interest free now, so there's no interest on You are sure? Yeah, yeah it's interest free. <laughs> interest -free. <laughs> exactly. interest -free. <laughs> okay, well, because no uh, uh, me, I know yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, Before they wake up, say, ah, the way it is. Managing the money, your banks will not tell us that uh, they have their some. Just like Uzi said, we'll have to wait to find out because it's tight. Let's to the take name. Yeah. So eventually we'll find out. They'll I make think adjustments. One of the reasons why I actually went through the act, I kept reading and reading. I was looking for that interest. I kept looking. Okay, that's good. Let okay. us be praying. So we have a comment here from Osagi in Benin. He says, Madam Uti is our lecturer today. So yes, so. <laughs> yes, so. Okay. She's allowing ended. us to breathe. She's allowing us to breathe. Our educational system is not rooted in our social cultural experiences. It is very foreign and alienating to us. Other nations like US build their educational system within the context of their culture. They learn from their culture, they study from the known to the unknown. While our educational system is very imaginative, uh, we imagine a lot of things. Our educational system is very theoretical uh, without practical relevance. Until our educational system is made more practical in its approach, it cannot contribute much to the development of the nation. In us, in us for example, students can work while yes. they study. In the US, yes. Oh, <laughs> in yeah. the U.S. Um, the students can work while they study, but um, here, we, uh, they gather us in one place in the name of school without the hope of giving, giving work after school. We must create the educational 
the education that encourages students to work while they study. This is from Santos. And so, so Santos yes, makes sense. Makes one very but we actually sense. don't. So it, that is not really the fault of the education system. Mm. We don't have an employment culture for mm. part-time work. Mm. What mm. we have here is graduate. You must be a graduate. You must be a graduate. So there, there are reforms. No that room needed. for yeah. yeah, there are reforms that are needed there, so but he does done. make a point. Um, so we will, we will bring you sense. back for employment <laughs> reform. Uh -uh. Topic as well. Whilst in school as a student. But thank you so much, Kuti. We had so much fun. Awesome. Ah, thank you, ladies. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all social media handles that way show Africa, you can interact with us further, drop your comment. And more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow. Now, if you missed our quote for today, Debt certainty isn't always a bad thing. A mortgage can help you afford a home. Uh, student loan can be a necessity in getting a good job. Both are investments worth making and both will uh, come with fairly low interest rates. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>